Hello and welcome to what today will be a 15 minute coding challenge. I am going to attempt to program from scratch in JavaScript the snake game. Uh, I don't think I've ever done this before. Perhaps I have certainly made stuff that resembles it. But and if you're not familiar with the snake game, pause this video, Google it, play it. I think you'll find it. Okay. Um, so let's just get started. We don't have time. I kind of want to like spend some time getting to know you, but I can't because I only have 14 minutes and 30 seconds right now. So the first thing that I want to do is, and I'm in P, I'm using a JavaScript framework called P5JS, and uh, P5JS uh, requires a setup function and a draw function. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make a canvas that is I don't know uh, 600 by 600 pixels. And uh, we're going to go over here to look at this page. There we go. There's a canvas there. It's empty. Boy, i got to move faster than this. And uh, now we're going to uh, give it a background. I just want to make sure things are up and running. It's good. So I've got a canvas. Um, you know, maybe I need to move this over. It's kind of under the timer. But whatever. You get the point. There's the canvas. My <laughs> timer's in the way. Ah, OK, that's fine. Uh, I'll, it'll get better next time. So, um, so let's see what do we want to do here. So I'm going to do this with some object-oriented programming. And I'm going to write something called a constructor function. I have some tutorials about constructor functions, if you don't know what that is. And what I'm going to do is make an object that has an x and a y. And I'm also going to keep track of an x speed and a y speed uh, because what I want, and let's just make this one, what I want is for this snake object to have some functions, like an update function. And what happens in that update function is that x value simply changes by the x speed value, and the y value simply changes by the y speed value. Now, I want another function. I'm going to call it show, because what I want is for, <laughs> uh, I want to draw, oh, I know, I'm going to draw a rectangle. A rectangle at this dot x, this dot y, that's, I don't know, 10 by 10. And I'm going to make that rectangle white. So the point of this is I want to have this simple object. It's a snake object. It has an x and a y, an x speed and a y speed. It's going to move around the window. And it's x and y move based on that x and y speed. So at the beginning of the program, I can create a variable. I'm just going to name it s. Maybe I would want to name it snake in a sort of more normal day of my life. But this is a little bit of a rushed little project here. So I'm going to just call it var s. And I'm going to say s is a new snake. and um, then I'm going to say s.update and s.show. And I might want to move this snake object to another file, JavaScript file at some point, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I'm sure we got some stuff wrong. But we can say, hey, look, there it is. There's my snake. It's moving across the window. Hi, snake. Go, come back. No, go away. OK, whatever. OK, so um, now, uh, so that's pretty good. OK. What happens in the snake game? I think if you press the up arrow, it goes up. If you press the down arrow, it goes down. Left arrow. So we can add something in P5. We can add a function that's just sort of like a global event called key pressed. And I can say, I think if key equals up arrow, oh boy, I hope that's right. Oh, key code. I think with these, you want to check a built in variable in P5 called key code. Um, then I want to say to my snake, I'm going to give, I'm going to set a direction like move uh, up uh, zero along the x axis, but negative one is up. So you can see kind of this idea that I'm doing here, which is, uh, boy, I hope these are right, which is this idea that the, the snake is going to have a new function that's going to allow me to set its direction. And if I press up, I want to set its direction to 0, negative 1, down, 0, 1. And then I also want to do right and left. So let me quickly copy and paste this two more times. And I need a right arrow and a left arrow. And if, if it's moving to the right, it's x is 1 and it's y is 0. If it's moving to the left, it's x is negative 1 and it's y is 0. So of course, this isn't going to work now. We can, we can run this and I can start hitting keys. But it's going to say s.dir is not a function. So I made up this idea of a function called dir for direction. But I need to actually add it to my object. And you know what, what the, let's, let's be ambitious here. Let's take this object and let's make a. Uh, this is a little bit dangerous what I'm doing here. <laughs> Let's make a separate file. I'm going to call it snake.js. 
I'm going to paste it back in there, and in my index.html, I am also going to add a reference to snake.js. This just allows me to organize my code a little bit differently, so I can have sketch.js, which just has setup, draw, and keep rest, and I can have snake.js, which is just the snake object. Oh, my timer thing is in the way of my code a little bit. I, 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 I got to work on this bar. Okay, that's a little bit better. So you can see this is the, all the code, the constructor function for making this kind of object. But what was the point of doing that? I need to add another function called this.dir. And the point of that function was to receive two values, an x and a y, and to use those two values to actually set this object's direction. So now, if I receive an x and a y, that's what the x speed and y speed become. And if I go back to sketch.js, I can see here, there we go. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, I got, got worried that my audio stopped working or something, but it seems to still be working. I do feel like I'm a little bit loud today. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I shouldn't be doing this live in the middle of the video, but whatever. Um, okay, so now if I do this, we should see press down, press to the right, press down, press to the left. You can see, now let's do something here, and let's, so let's think about this for a second. We want the snake, hmm, one thing we need to think about here, and there's a lot of different ways we could implement this, but the, the canvas, you would really want to think of it as a grid, because the snake is actually going to be a large rectangle, and as it moves, it's going to move to the next spot in the grid, the next spot, it moves down the next spot. So we need, I want some sort of variable to keep track of the size of this grid. I don't know what to call it. I could call it R. I could call it R. Let's just call it R. Let's call it, um, let's call it SCL to stand for scale. I don't want to call it scale because scale is a built-in function in P5. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to add a variable. I'm going to call it uh, SCL for scale, and I'm going to make it 20. And then, actually, that's kind of, that could be, a, that's a global variable. Um, and in the snake, I want to have everything based on that. So I want to move by the x speed, and this is really just the, x speed and y speed is really just the direction. And then I want to draw the snake at that scale. And now, if we go back to uh, the browser, and I hit refresh, whoa, it's so fast, right? So, <laughs> oh, you know, a couple things. Let's just add some code really briefly to constrain it. This.x equals, uh, the p5 has a function called constrain, where I can say, hey, take this value, like x, and constrain it between 0 and the width. And you know what? The width minus scale, because I don't want it to actually go off. It's a rectangle drawn from the top left. And uh, this dot y, I want to constrain it to constrain it from this dot y to the height minus scale. How are we doing? We've got seven minutes left. We're getting somewhere. Okay, so now we can see that this is kind of working. This is ultimately going to be my snake. Now, you know, I might not like what I'm about to do next in most cases, but I think it's going to be fine for me to just really reduce the frame rate because the snake game is kind of this like low res throwback thing. It's just going to so I'm just going to globally in P5 in my setup, I'm just going to say like frame rate, and I'm just going to say 10. And now I'm going to refresh it again. And you can see this looks sort of like what the snake game might be. OK, so we've got that. I can now <laughs> press arrow keys and move it around. What are the things that are missing now? The snake game, random bits of food appear. When a bit of food appears, the snake tries to eat that food. When the snake eats that food, it gets a little bit longer. And if the snake ever runs into itself, it dies. Oh boy, that's a lot of stuff to do in six minutes. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, let's add a piece of food. So um, I want to, oh boy, this is a little, fine, fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let's just do it. No problem, no problem, no problem. Let's, uh, I, I kind of want to make a food object, but we don't have a lot of time. Maybe I'll refactor that in later. Let's, um, let's just make a, uh, let's, let's make it a vector. Um, so I'm going to use create vector, which is a quick and easy way to store both an X and a Y. <laughs> of course, I didn't use the vector in the snake, but whatever, it's fine. We can be a little messy for fun today. Create vector, and I'm going to give it a random spot um, in the window, and I'm going to in uh, draw, I'm going to um, I'm going to make my uh, food a nice like purple or pink color. I'm going to draw uh, food.x, food.y, and I'm going to make it the same size. And now we can run it. We can see, oh, there's my food. I want to come and get my food now. It's not exactly on the grid. So I should probably deal. Let's make this correct. So what I actually want to do in terms of its location is I'm going to make a function that uh, called pick location. And what that function is going to do is, first we need to know what are the number of columns. So it's the width of the window I mean, divided by that scale. And 
Uh, then the number of rows, which is the height of the window divided by scale. And then now I want to create a piece of food that is a random column and a random row. And I also want to use floor with both of these. Oh boy. You know, ah, this is getting to be a very long line of code here. But so what, uh, what did I just do? I wrote a function um, that picks a location because I want, it to I want it to be only one of these spots in the grid. So I have to divide. This is spot 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2. So I need to divide by how big that scale is by the width to pick one of those integers. And then I actually need its actual location. I want to multiply it by that scale to expand it back out. So, and the floor function is everywhere just because I need these things to be whole numbers for this to work well. So now you can see this should, the food, <laughs> well, that didn't seem to work. Are we sure? <laughs> Are we sure I did that correctly? Oh, that's right. Ah, it's a little bit off. I, maybe I'm not going to worry about that right now. Somebody will, uh, um, somebody will correct me. <laughs> Correct this later. It's close enough. I'll fix that later because I only have four minutes left. So what I want to do now is figure out, uh, I want to write a function s dot eat the food. I want to do something. <laughs> I, I expanded myself by five minutes a day. Clearly that's not enough time. Uh, I want the snake to eat the food. So um, in the snake object, I need to add another function called eat. Technical difficulties, but I'm back. And where I, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm writing the function where the snake eats the food. So I need to check if the snake is at the same location of the food. And I, okay, actually, I, while I was having technical difficulties, I realized I'm missing something important, which is we have this whole pick location function, but I didn't actually call it up here. I need the food location to be at this thing that I spent all this time doing to so make sure it's on the grid. So now that should solve that problem where the food is perfectly aligned on the grid with the snake. But let's go back to where we were, snake.eat location. So in the snake object, this means I need to write a function called eat. And this function is going to receive a position, a vector for where that food is. And I could check if they're in exactly the same space, but I'm pretty sure that if I just use the distance between like where the snake actually is, x and y, to the uh, where the food is, x and y, and if I just check if that distance is less then like one pixel, I should probably check two pixels or three pixels, but whatever. I'm going to say return true. In other words, I want this function to tell me whether or not the snake reached the food. And if it's true, what do I want to do with this information? So I want to come back here and I want to say, oops, if the snake eats the food, then I want to what? Pick, uh, pick a new location. Oh, you know what? I realized it's not e food does not equal pick location. This function I wrote just sets the location for that food itself. So I could just call pick location again. It's not returning anything. Boy, my mind is getting fuzzy toward the end of these videos. There's only two minutes left. But let's see. I think we're going to be really close now. So now we should see. I'm going to move. Come on, be on the grid. Look at that. It's right on the grid. And I can eat that piece of food and it'll go somewhere new. Well, this is fun to play. I don't have time to play this right now. I got to keep moving. Okay, so what do I need to do? If it gets the food, it needs to become longer. How do I keep track of a snake that has a length to it? Well, I need some sort of array, some sort of variable to keep track of how long is that snake. So let's go back to the code. We got to go back to the snake object and let's add something called this.total. And that equals one because the snake, and you know what? Let's actually. I'm going to do something a little bit goofy, which is that I'm going to keep the x and the y is the current location and the, ar uh, the array that I'm going to store, the length of that array is just its history. So at first it's zero because it only has its current location and the rest of it. This is actually going to be useful later, I just realized. And I'm going to make another variable called uh, tail, which is going to be an array. So one thing for sure is if it eats the food, total should go up by one. So total should go up by one. Now, as it moves, I want to have a loop. What goes in this loop? Well, I definitely want to loop through that total. And actually, I want to do all of this right before, right before it moves. Oh boy, I kind of need to work this out. I only have 38 seconds, but I need to work this out a little bit in my head here. So if this is the array, and this is the snake's current location, maybe what I want is to put its current location uh, pre 
in the, in the last spot and shift everything down, the history down. So this is, this is where it was four, times, four moments ago, three moments ago, two moments ago, one moment ago. That'll do. So the first thing I need to do in this array is shift all the spots. So I really actually want to loop through total minus one. And I want to say uh, tail index i equals tail index i plus one. That's going to do, I'm sure my time has expired now. We're going to see how long this takes. I'm going to just click a little window here. I'm going to hit OK. It stops at one second. And it's going to say time expired. And you know what? Yeah, no, let's leave that there. We'll see. Well, you'll see how long this video is, and that's how long it took. OK, so this is going to shift everything over by one. And then when I'm done, I want the very last spot, which is tail uh, total minus one, to equal create vector this dot x, this dot y. So this now allows, that's its current location, and then it can move. And so now, when I'm drawing it, in addition to drawing the rectangle at its current location, I need to also say, draw all the rectangle, draw its tail. So I want a rectangle at, <laughs> tail index i, oh, and I realized I've made a classic JavaScript error. Classic JavaScript error. I've got this thing called tail, which is really important, but it's this dot tail. Tail is part of the snake. <laughs> so everywhere I put tail, I forgot this dot tail. This, is, this happens to me all the time. This is like the bane of my existence. Every, oh, and this dot total also. Oh boy. So I think I probably, I'm looking around this dot tail, this dot tail, this dot tail, this dot total, this dot total. I should just have a big blinking sign in front of me that just says this dot, this dot, this dot. Okay, let's run this and see if this works now. Hit refresh. I don't know, I'm sure I missed something. And come on, eat that food. Ah, oh, total is not defined on line 12. So there's a place that I forgot it. Line 12, this dot total plus plus. Let's hope we miss, didn't miss. Okay, I gotta, I'm trying to look at the camera to make eye contact with you. And oh, look at that. The snake is, oh, cannot read property x of undefined snake.js42. Okay, it, it, it extended by one, but how come when it extended by two, it didn't work? Line 42, line 42. This seems totally reasonable to me. Um, so what happened? This, this show is always happening. Uh, okay, let's think about what order all this stuff is happening. Maybe that's the issue. Oh boy, I really gotta, <laughs> this is bad. Okay, we're gonna, it's fine. This video is gonna be a little bit long because I'm gonna debug this now. Back again, a little bit of splicing and dicing here, but I'm going from where I, uh, I'm going from where I wanna add bits, I wanna add the tail of the snake. So when the snake eats the food, the total goes up. Total is keeping track of how many bits of history of the snake's length do we have left. So I know what, what I want to do is uh, anytime this dot total does not, uh, anytime, so okay, one thing I need to do is I always need to shift, and I actually have a diagram. <laughs> I'm going to just add this in here. Okay, what I need to do here is I always need to shift the tail down. I need to shift everything down in the history. So I'm going to say this dot, this dot tail index i equals this dot tail index i plus one. This is going to shift the spots down as the snake moves, all of its, uh, all of its spots shift down so I can get the new spot in the end of the array, right? Because what I want is to then say this dot tail um, <clears throat> index total minus one equals the new location. So I have this array that always shifts down and I get, I have this array that always shifts everything back and then the new spot goes in the end. So let me explain to you what I mean. I actually have this diagram from my technical difficulty part, but uh, I'm over here now, come, oops, ah. Boy, everything is falling apart today. Come on over here, button. So in other words, I have this array. Let's just imagine for a second that this is the history of where the snake has been. So the new location is going to go in the end. 
and all the other spots will shift down and the oldest location will be deleted. So this is what I'm doing here. Now, if however, the, um, if, however, the uh, snake has eaten a piece of food, it should actually get bigger and the new location should go over here. So if you think about this, what I'm saying is there's two different possibilities. If this dot total equals this dot tail dot length, meaning no food has been eaten, so the total is the same as the existing array length, then just shift everything over and give me my last spot. Otherwise, only put the new spot in and I don't need to shift. So in that sense, this can go over here. So the shifting, this is a small, tiny nuance, but the shifting only happens, the shifting only happens if we haven't eaten any food because the new spot has to go in here, everything has to get shifted over. If we've eaten food, we just add a new spot on. And now, oops, I'm tripping over like, now we should be able to run this and see, ah, but you know what I need to add to draw? I need to also In, in show, in the show function, I need to also draw a rectangle where, ah, where everything is. Oh, I'm losing steam here today. Um, okay, so I need to draw a rectangle at this dot tail index i dot x and this dot tail index i dot y. All these will be white. And uh, I, I was mucking around with this, make this 20, refresh. Oops, total is not defined. Ah, I forgot the this dot. Uh, and somewhere here, um, under line 30, uh, this dot total, classic JavaScript error, always forgetting the this dot. Okay, here we go. Now run this again. Come on, I'm gonna eat this piece of food and my snake is gonna be two rectangles long. I'm gonna eat another piece of food. It's three rectangles long. Another piece of food. <laughs> it's four rectangles long. Guess what now? Now we need to figure out when should the snake die. Now I should do something if it hits the edge, but I'll add that in another day. What I'm gonna do right now is if the snake hits part of its body, then it's dead. So this is something we can really just write a new function for. Uh, this dot death, I don't like the word death, it seems so. This dot, ah, well fine, we'll just use it. That's how, it, that's what it is. Uh, um, so what I need to do is loop through every spot in the tail. And remember the tail does not include its actual head. Uh, this dot, this dot tail dot length. And what I'm going to check and see is if, right? So I, uh, I, uh, I'm going to look at each position, which is this dot tail index i. And let's look at the distance. Again, just like how we checked if it ate the food, let's look at the distance between the x location and that particular spot on the tail. If, if distance is less than one, like if it's really gotten there, if really want to check if they're exactly equal, but I'm just, since they're going, if it's less than one, then I'm going to set total back equal to zero and this dot tail back equal to nothing. So we're just going to have it go back to nothing. So this is now checking if it's, if, if it's front location as ever, right? If it's, if whatever is in the new spot, is connected with any of these. And we need to make sure we do this before we shift anything in because we don't want its current spot to actually have shifted into the array. So now we should be able to go back to sketch and I should be able to add right up here uh, after update, let's do this. Um, yeah, I think I don't think it should matter but I'm gonna check it before I update it. That makes sense, right? <laughs> Uh, actually, you know what I think I need to do is I need to check it. No, 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 no. This is no good. Uh, this is actually got to be, thought, be thoughtful about this. I actually want to check it when. I want to check it right here the moment x moves to the next spot, which is fine because I want to check it. it. It does this after and then I check and then I do all this shifting. So that should actually be fine. So we're just going to say s.death right here. We're going to run this. Now, I got to get it to be a little bit long. So I have to play this for a little bit and get good at it. Three, uh oh, oh, big problem. 
I can't hit the edge. Hitting the edge is very bad. <laughs> let's start over. And let's, uh, I'm going to deal with the edges later. And let's just not hit the edge. Okay, I think I could probably, once I'm four, length four, I could probably, oh, go backwards. I, I should, oh, no, no, no. I just died there because I went backwards. <laughs> okay, everybody, hold on. <laughs> Let's, 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 let's have a little bit of a, um, let's actually, um, let's go back to this. And let's console log uh, starting over. There's a really easy way to test this, I should, which is just to be able to go backwards, which I probably should protect against. So let's be, let's be a length one, two, yeah, you can see I started over because I just went backwards. So we should probably not allow the snake to ever be able to go backwards. But let's, so I'm going to add something in right now, which is uh, I'm just going to add uh, mouse pressed. And I'm going to say uh, s dot, I'm going to sort of cheat by just saying every time I press the mouse, I'm going to add as if I'm eating food. So we can really test to make sure this is working. So I'm just adding a lot of spots, and now we can see that works. So if I ever intersect one of my existing spots, I, I have to start over. So there's, I'm going to end this now because it's kind of, we kind of have the complete game basically. We have the snake object. It has a few bits of functionality, right? It can check to see if it found a piece of food by checking the distance between it and the food. If it is, it increases its size. <laughs> we can move it, which means it keeps track of its history, shifting everything down. It moves to the next spot, and it's keeping itself on the screen. And it's also now checking to see if it's intersecting with any of its previous spots. So what's missing, which I will add later after the fact, if when you look at the code for this, is it's missing. Number one is it shouldn't be allowed to go backwards. Maybe it should be, but you know, you as the user of the game should just not know not to do that. And also, I need to deal with the edges. So I should also add something in this death function that if you hit an edge, maybe of the window, you also, um, you also kind of lose your uh, life, so to speak, which actually, I just realized is happening because of this constraint. Because constraint keeps it in the same place as it was previously, which means it'll then figure out that it's, just, that it, that it's intersecting where it was previously and, and, and call starting over. So that's actually working. Okay, this, um, so, uh, and scene. 